about radio. Hi guys, uh, as you know in these videos what I try to do is uh, show you something that maybe you won't see every day or else try and explain something that maybe isn't obvious and um, uh, I realize that there's a lot of things that I take for granted simply because um, uh, I've worked in an environment where I've been taught these things, I've read about them, I've learned about them and so there are a lot of things I, I simply see and take for granted and um, one of the things that uh, I took for granted is um, this uh, little plate. This is one of the plates that I took out of that variable capacitor in uh, the video about radio uh, number 51 where I um, uh, modified my uh, signal generator and uh, that plate, uh, that little capacitor plate is silver plated and um, it's, it's, that's perfectly reasonable um, yet if you look at a domestic radio the, uh, the variable capacitor almost certainly is going to be made out of aluminium and um, aluminium is a, a reasonable conductor um, uh, but silver is a significantly better conductor so you might sort of say well hang on what's the difference between the capacitor in my domestic radio and um, the capacitor uh, that I used in uh, this um, uh, this particular project and this capacitor was designed to work at high frequency um, your domestic radio um, is uh, in the main it's in a uh, fairly low frequency range uh, certainly long and medium wave uh, uh, ranges but when you get into uh, the megahertz range, um, the uh, resistance in the, in the part actually matters. And the reason for this has to do with self-inductance. Uh, when current flows in a conductor, um, if it's a DC current, then reasonably um, that current flows uniformly uh, throughout the area of the copper so if uh, if uh, if this uh, uh, tool if this was a copper conductor and we passed DC through it and if we could see if we could look into it in, in, into, into the depths of it reasonably we would see that current was flowing uniformly uh, throughout all parts of that conductor um, if it's an AC signal then um, it's, it's a completely different picture and with uh, any conductor it possesses the property of self-inductance whether it's a, a flat plate like this capacitor or if it's a, a copper wire like these copper wires I've got on the bobbins here um, it has a property of inductance and what happens um, as the frequency increases so this notion of self uh, inductance becomes more profound and the higher the frequency uh, the higher the, or the greater the effect of that self inductance and effectively what it does it forces the current to flow um, predominantly closer to the surface of the copper. So if this was a copper uh, conductor uh, carrying DC, we've said that the current will be distributed uniformly throughout that conductor. But at AC, the current flows um, progressively closer to the surface of the conductor as uh, the frequency increases. So at mains frequency 50 Hz or 60 Hz you can go up to a fairly large con diameter conductor or bus bar and uh, the skin depth is not an issue. Um, 
most of the work that I did um, when I was designing and manufacturing radio frequency induction heaters, most of my work was at around 100 kilohertz. And if this was a copper conductor carrying 100 kilohertz, then I can tell you off the top of my head that the, the skin depth, the depth at which the current would flow, uh, the majority of the current would flow in the first eight thousandths of an inch. And it's called skin effect. It, it, it is literally skin effect. So it doesn't matter if this if this conductor was a, an inch thick, it's 25 mil, if it was a 25 mil diameter conductor, it would still only get current traveling around the outer surface of that conductor and uh, the depth of that current would be eight thousandths of an inch. So it doesn't matter how thick it is, two inch diameter conductor, it's still going to travel in that skin. And um, that's uh, it's, it's just uh, one of the laws of physics. Uh, okay, so what's that got to do with this silver plated uh, capacitor? Well, uh, when you get into the megahertz range, the skin depth, and the depth at which the current will flow, is so shallow that it will actually flow within the depth of the silver plating. Um, so the silver is chosen because it's uh, a, a good conductor um, and the silver will carry the radio frequency, those high megahertz frequencies. So you'll see in a HF set, uh, you'll see the, the uh, coils, chokes, um, the, the larger ones, uh, will be uh, silver plated. Uh, so if you've got a linear amplifier, there's every chance that the, um, uh, uh, the chokes in there um, uh, are going to be silver plated, if it's a good one anyway. Um, and things like the variable capacitors will be silver plated. You'll, you'll get gold plating, in, uh, even at DC, gold is good for contacts, so for plugs and sockets or audio plugs and sockets, where you've got very low voltages and uh, you want to hang on to all of the voltage that you can, you have the minimum resistance. So you use gold plating. Um, but on capacitors, variable capacitors, they silver plate them. Um, normally you'll see it as a, um, a drab, it's probably oxidized, may, it may even have some black marks on it. But uh, on this one I've, I've polished one section of it with a bit of brasso so as you can see how shiny the silver is and it looks like your your silver candle six when you've polished them if you've got any um, as a little section in the middle there that's uh, brass what i've done i've taken a bit of emery and i've rubbed away the silver plating so as you can see the brass underneath and then the, the last third this third section i've just left it as the the, the dirty silver plating um, so, say self-inductance causes any conductor uh, to electrically look smaller than it physically is. Okay, I've got these two uh, bobbins of wire here, and um, this is a, a single core wire. It's uh, uh, zero point two five millimeters diameter. And I've got another wire here. Now this is a Litz wire, and this is seven strands of 0 0.04 millimeters. So if I compare these two side by side, uh, you'll see that the single strand is in fact much uh, thicker than the seven thin strands. But in terms of sur surface area, the seven thin strands has a larger surface area. In fact, in this case, it's, it's getting on for 12% uh, more surface area in a thinner wire, if you can come to terms with that. So the surface area is pi times the diameter. So uh, this is pi times 0.25, so pi times 0.25 millimeters diameter is uh, 0.785 
millimeters circumference so that's the circumference times whatever the length is will give you the surface area so that's uh, uh, 0 0.785 millimeters circumference and uh, this uh, 7 times uh, 0 0.0 Zero four millimeters times pi uh, gives us a surface area or a circumference of uh, zero point eight seven nine millimeters. The surface area of this little bunch of wires is greater than this, and given that at high frequency in the in the high megahertz range, the current is going to be forced to flow in the surface or just under the surface of the the conductor it means that this wire this thin wire will actually carry more useful current than this even though it looks like a short circuit at, um, at DC in the megahertz range because of this property of uh, self inductance uh, the, the middle of this wire may as well be hollow because it will not carry any current and um, uh, again, going back to my work at 100 kilohertz, um, uh, when designing uh, buzz bars to carry thousands of amps, you um, uh, have to be very careful how you, you go about this because if you, uh, if you design two copper plates to go there, you know, sort of uh, uh, feeding uh, some component, the current will only travel in that surface and that surface to a depth of 8 thou. Um, even though it's got a lot of breadth to it, uh, it, so what you have to do is make your buzz bars like this, so as they're very close together, and then you get 8 thou across that surface area and that surface area. And uh, I have a lot of very practical, very real experience of uh, designing for radio frequency. Um, uh, when you get to 8 megahertz and you're dealing with real power, you know, um, lots of kilowatts, um, uh, having a, a buzz bar that is um, uh, polished as a pay, uh, opposed to um, uh, rough uh, makes a significant difference and um, I've, I've seen uh, uh, coils designed for use at 8 megahertz that have been silver plated like this and you get a, a, a reasonable result uh, when they're polished um, you, you start to get a fabulous result and that is because at 8 megahertz on a rough surface the currents having to travel up and down the microsurface and it's taking a, a longer path but when it's a polished surface the current flows smoothly through that uh, that nice shiny surface. So um, I'll show you these items under the microscope. Um, I hope you find that interesting. Um, look up skin effect, look up Litz wire and um, you, you can learn a lot more about it. So, uh, I hope you find that interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.